you you see it like that because you living in the real world. Yeah. You you um sincere, you legit, you sharing your story, mm-hmm. talking about the real story of being a CEO. Mm-hmm. Sadly, that ain't what people buy. Mm-hmm. People buy the dream. Like you know, it's people that have hundreds of thousands of followers, like mm-hmm. taking pictures in front of that car, that car. Like now, somebody like you, who mm-hmm. you talk to these people, like you can spot what's real and what's not. Facts. But a lot of people buy that. Like, if I was to go out, if we go find a Lamborghini now, yeah. I ain't got no Lamborghini, you ain't got no Lamborghini. Right. If we was to go find it, me and you, like this in front of the Lamborghini, like, you know how many people have clicked that? Yeah. So that's what people doing. They literally buying a bunch of followers, buying a bunch, rent a bunch of stuff, like rent a bunch of all of this stuff to make it look that way, mm-hmm. just so they can sell the dream. But you know, like you selling substance, mm-hmm. so what makes sense to you, it's like, no, this this shit hard. Good idea. Now we buying merch. Girl, that's ghetto. Payment miss. Ooh, the ghetto. Say she quit. Ooh, the ghetto. Laid on your rent. Rent is ghetto. New event. Ooh, the ghetto. Invoice in. It ain't ghetto. Money spin. Oh, that's ghetto. Hold on. It's kind of ghetto being a CEO. What's up, co-worker? Don't you want to link together and get a live podcast experience of this ghetto CEO podcast? Wouldn't you love to see Cody on the couch and your favorite entrepreneurs here in Atlanta? Well, you got to tap in and come to our happy hour live podcast experience December 16th of this year. Yes, December 16th, 2023. We are doing a live ghetto CEO podcast. And guess what, y'all? I'm bringing some of y'all to the couch. All you got to do is click the link below and you can either get your ticket or get on the wait list so that you can be able to get on this couch make your plans grab your flights get your rooms because listen the ghetto ceo live podcast is not something that you want to miss so december 16th i want to see you guys there listen last time we had the drinks flowing we had the vibes going we had a little dance we had bars and all the things so get in the room for the next ghetto ceo live podcast and i'll see you guys there now back to the episode Welcome back to another episode of the Ghetto CEO Podcast, where we talk about all things being a CEO. And today I got my co-host, Lil Cody. Pow, pow. Big Cody. Big Co- I thought <laughs> Baby Cody was Big Cody. So it's, it depends on the day. Okay. Right now I'm Big Cody. Okay, no, Big Cody. No. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I know y'all have been listening to us at the Monday meetings. Yeah. Okay? So we yeah. tapped in. We done brought a guest to the couch, uh-huh, all right? Uh-huh. But listen, Ghetto CEO Podcast is all about bringing CEOs to the couch to tell the raw and unfiltered truth behind being a CEO because he's giving a little get out, okay? But today is no different. We got my boy, Albert of Right Choice. What's up? What's going on? What's going on? Are you excited to be on the couch? Hey, I'm excited. I, w- I want to start. Before we get into this Right Choice, yeah. though, let's talk about the couch. <laughs> <laughs> the couch is hey. monumental. This is the best couch I don't been on in 20 years. Yo, talk it. So if y'all see me sleep over here, just keep going. Yeah, keep just going. Keep, just keep yeah, Tag uh, Lauren in. Lauren, y'all know Lauren just off camera. Anybody who yeah. follow me, y'all know she over there. Yes. What's up, Lauren? <laughs> hey, girl. Listen. Okay, y'all. So we finna tap in, but I'm gonna let you introduce yourself. But you can't give us a regular introduction. I ain't gonna make you give us no bars. Man, okay. I was looking forward to it. I know. I know. He was like, no. Oh, um, before but- he was texting, he was rapping. I just want everybody to know. <laughs> If you follow his social medias, you might find a mixtape or something. Lauren confirmed. Yeah. Back in the day, Albert was rapping. So, okay, I mean, can you give us some bars for Albert? I need, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, I gave okay. you the, I gave But you got to give me the beat. I'm with it. Okay. All right, all right, let go, let go. Ah, shit. Not a chicken head. <laughs> <laughs> all right, here we go. I got Alvin in the building, and he's saving that paper. Hey. You don't work with him. That just mean you a hater. Hey. Make the wrong choice. This the right choice. Hey. Four million last year, and he ain't getting nobody no divorce. Whoa. Yeah. Whoa. You know, some people get divorced. Got to keep him. He got to keep him. to make him get the gotta divorce. Got to keep him. He just did it the right way. I was feeling it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, we, we could have kept that going. I mean, we could have kept I mean, that going. I would say, I'm going to run that ass. Hey, look. It's about to be on the radio. <laughs> you know that's how they do it in the there. commercials in Atlanta. That's all it takes. Yes. That's all it takes. One take. bar. One bar, you stuck in that uh, You can give me the official intro now, but that yes, was just, you yes. know, soft, soft. Who are you, Albert, and welcome to the couch? Thank y'all for having me. My name's Albert. C. Hurston Jr. on us, right choice account. I'm still on the bar. Yeah. Let me get, <laughs> yeah. I'm like, they were kind of smooth. Like, you yeah. know, off the chin out. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah that yeah, was tough. Yeah, yeah. Anyway. He was like, we need a jingle. We're going to have to talk about it. It's like, bro, let, I'm like, write that down. We need to get back. <laughs> but yeah, my name is Albert C. Hurston Jr., CPA. I'm the owner of Right Choice Accounting Solutions. 
We help coaches, consultants, professional service providers maximize their profits while saving a lot in taxes. A lot in taxes. Period. Over the last three years, three to four years, we've saved over 11 million for our clients. So, Ooh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Say some taxes, then you about to pull up. <laughs> oh, look now. Look, we'll drop another one. I'm we'll drop say, another one. I'm going to say. Calm down. Calm down. Listen. But no, that is monumental, right? Because do y'all primarily work with black owned businesses? Yeah. yeah. Listen. Uh, you know, that really, it kind of, when you look like, look like I look, yeah. it kind of just, it, it, happens. it happens. Yeah. Stay yeah. in the streets. One business at a time. Yeah. And okay. we the ones who, just to be real, you know, we the ones who are under sorry. Nobody really want to give us the time and attention anyway, so. We can do it for ourselves. I'm excited for this. I'm excited for this. So talk to us a little bit about what it looks like to really dive into the money of a black owned business because we don't know no money. Well, it's a it's a lot of education. Me, me and Lauren were just talking about it in the car. It's more like I'm almost more like a coach sometimes. Mm-hmm. Almost like a coach consultant than like somebody's accounting and tax guy. Because it's a lot of education. It's a lot of this is the way it's supposed to be. This is how you're supposed to spend your income. This is like there are metrics, there's data, there's all that mm-hmm. stuff, but who who gonna tell us? Yeah. So you know, a lot of it starts off like no, like we don't just blow through the money because it's it's cash. We don't even spend cash. Mm-hmm. We only spend income. Yeah. We ignore cash because all cash need to be doing is growing. Yeah. So as long as we focus on the income, the expenses, making sure we're not overspending nowhere, doing all that, the cash gonna just go up like we want it to. So that's. Oh, go ahead. Oh, yeah. I was just, as you were saying, because so, I feel like you're probably working with a lot of businesses uh, who haven't filed their taxes the right way up until the point they got to you. So what type of pushback do you see when you're trying to tell people the right way? Do you have people be like, nah, dog, I can't? Or how do you get them over that, like, uh, doubt factor to trust what you're saying? You just have to show and prove. Because, mm-hmm. you know, when you go from kind of just getting it done to, like, now you're doing it the right way, mm-hmm. or, you know, the right choice way. Uh-oh. Hey. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. But when you're doing it the right way, there are it's just a lot more red tape, a lot more structure. So it's always pushed back. But you know, every single person different. Everybody motivated mm-hmm. by different stuff. Mm-hmm. So you just got to be real with them about the risk that they up against, the potential threat they posing for themselves. Mm-hmm. And most people, most people got a code. You just, you just had to crack it. Gotcha. Yeah. You know, one thing that I've learned with entrepreneurs is that a lot of times we spend the business money like it's our money. Facts. And we don't think that we are actually, we got a job. Like, yeah. you should be getting a paycheck and you shouldn't just be dipping in and out of your money. So how do you, like, break that mindset of, like, this ain't your money? Just like that. Yeah. Just like that. <laughs> Dude, I, if, man, I, we should have invited Lauren over here cause, so she could just nod and be like, yep. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. like, if y'all was to hear how much I say, this ain't your money. Yeah. Because you know, like, we typically, we work with a lot of entrepreneurs who get, like, they first big one. Mm-hmm. Like, I just sold my first 25K program. Mm-hmm. I just sold my first. So, you know, that feel like 25 bands. Mm-hmm. Right. That's, you know, it's more like 12.5 because, mm-hmm. you know, you've been around. So, you yeah. have to you have to almost catch them before the money gone. Because, mm-hmm. you know, I mean, I think, I ain't going to speak to y'all past or nothing like that. But, you know, like, a lot of us. The first time we see 25 yeah, bands. That was last like week, shit. Hey. Uh, yeah, yeah, I ain't right never there. seen 25 bands. I'm the broke CEO. We talk about <laughs> hey, I'm, I'm going to be a right choice hey. this coming spring. No, you, the, you the honest one. Most, most, on, most, mm. most, most a broke CEO. <laughs> okay. No matter what you see online. But no, hey. it's, really, it's really just saying that. Yeah. Like before this money touch, because you got to pay for everything. Yeah. You know, the cost of being a CEO is you got to foot the bill for everything. Mm. So 25 bands off top, the IRS got a piece of that. Mm-hmm. Your team got a piece of that. Hopefully your ad and marketing budget got a piece of that. Hopefully mm-hmm. your everybody else got a piece of that before you even get to smell it. Mm-hmm. And you know that's that's probably the most ghettoest part about being a CEO. Yeah. Other people eat before you. So okay. Yeah. So it's just having that conversation. You yeah. know, one thing that you said is in the in the midst of that conversation was that most people don't like to be transparent about where they are money wise. That's a fact. Why is that? Like, why are we ashamed to say that I ain't got no money? Listen, I ain't got no money. Okay, <laughs> I ain't got no money for this. I ain't got no, like, why are we not just transparent about? Because honestly, I feel like businesses do what businesses are supposed to do. They go up, they go down, they go left, they go right. So why are we so ashamed and we feel like we got to put on? Well, that you you see it like that because you living in the real world. Yeah, you you um sincere, you legit, you. 
sharing your story, mm-hmm. talking about the real story of being a CEO. Mm-hmm. Sadly, that ain't what people buy. Mm-hmm. People buy the dream. Like, you know, it's people that have hundreds of thousands of followers, like, mm-hmm. taking pictures in front of that car, that car. Like, now somebody like you, who you mm-hmm. talk to these people, like, you can spot what's real and what's not. Facts. But a lot of people buy that. Like, if I was to go out, if we go find a Lamborghini now, yeah. I ain't got no Lamborghini, you ain't got no Lamborghini. Right. If we was to go find it, me and you, like this in front of the Lamborghini, like, you know how many people have clicked that? Yeah. So that's what people doing. They literally buying a bunch of followers, buying a bunch, rent a bunch of stuff, like rent a bunch of all of this stuff to make it look that way, mm-hmm. just so they can sell the dream. But you know, like you selling substance, mm-hmm. so what makes sense to you, it's like, no, this, this shit hard. Yeah. Like, I just spent, I got a 20, you know what's more realistic, I just got a 25, got my first big ticket 25K offer. Now I get to get caught up on all this stuff I've been. Mm-hmm. It ain't like, it <laughs> right. ain't to the dealership. It's, come, let come, me pay down these. talk about it? Let, let me pay <laughs> down these credit cards. It's gone already. Yeah, let me pay down these credit cards. Let me yeah. pay these people that I've been like, hey, man, it's coming. Yeah, through. yeah, yeah, yeah I'll just give it two weeks. And then yeah. they be like, it been six months. Just two more weeks, though. Yeah. Then two weeks ain't going to hurt you. It's cool. Like, it been six months to your point. Like, yeah. I'm going to pay you one it, day. And that ain't black business. That's business. Like, yeah. people think black business is shaky, like shady, the ghetto, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. No, business, being a CEO, white, black, Hispanic, right. all of them, like all of us, what, robbing Peter to pay Paul? Uh-huh. That's a, yeah, yeah, until you get there. Yeah. But if you play that whole pretending game, like you ain't going to never really get there. Costs a lot more, too, to pretend. Man, it's fact. expensive to pretend. No, it do, because you can never go back. Right. Like, never. once you start pretending, you can't, because then the fall is so much higher. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So, like, once you pretend like you got a million dollars or you, you know what I'm saying, at this multi-million dollar status, the one thing is you can never celebrate when you actually get there because you were supposed to got there 10 years ago, yep. right? But then when you don't have it and you tired of faking and you tired of funking, then you can't even say nothing because you got to pretend because you built a business off of lies. Thanks. What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Marketing by Murray and... Albert the CPA or Albert C. Hurston Jr. Yes, we are here with the right choice, okay? Now, Albert, tell them why they got to make the right choice. So, if you are a coach, consultant, or other professional service provider who's looking to maximize your profit while saving a lot in taxes Mm -hmm. in a one-stop shop solution, Mm -hmm. I'm talking bookkeeping, accounting, CFO services, tax strategy. I know you don't want to pay taxes and tax preparation all in one place. Yes. We the right choice for you. Listen, I know entrepreneurs, y'all ain't got no money, but the reason why y'all ain't got no money is because you ain't got the right choice to help you keep the money, okay? Now listen, you, I know, you know what I mean? Y'all come to the Mob University to get marketing, sales, and all of that, but if I'm gonna help you make the money, I need you to make the right choice to help you keep the money, okay? Thanks. Now listen, Albert, how, how can I tap in? Yeah, so my website, rightchoicefirm.com. I'm Albert the CPA on Instagram, and I'm Albert C. Hurston Jr. Anywhere where you would want to find me. You can find me anywhere. I'll be there. Yes. Now, y'all make the right choice. Now, back to the episode. You can't even ask for help. No. When you need help, you can't even go to people and be like, hey, I'm a little messed up. I need help. Because everybody looking at you like, bro, I just saw you in front of right. a, I just saw you in front of a Lambo <laughs> yeah. at a mansion. Like, oh, you trying to get over on me. Yeah. You don't want to pay my... Like, nah, bro, I really need some help. Right. <laughs> like, I'm messed up in real life. Yeah. Like, but yeah, when you, f- I mean, everybody know that. If you yeah. just take a step back, like, ain't no win in faking. No. So what guidance do you, because I mean, obviously you see the numbers. Like when, when people, you, they bringing you, they taxes, right? Yeah. Um, so what guidance do you give to those people where you see like, hey, you spending egregiously on things that aren't really business related. And how do you kind of get them to see that, like, hey, you have to move these funds a different type of way? What, what's the first thing you point out to them to kind of win them over? Yeah, well, bro, I just talk to them. Like, because, you know, every single person different. They're motivated by different stuff. Mm-hmm. But I just talk to them, and I ask questions more often than not. Like, so what is it that you want? Because some people get in being to make money. Mm-hmm. Some people, like somebody like me, probably you, because we got these kids. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Hopefully I can say you got kids. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. My wife, my, my, my wife know I got it. <laughs> oh, I was going to say, you know, I ain't trying to blow that up. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, like, I'm, I'm trying to build a legacy. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to build something to hand down. Some people just want a Lambo. Right. So, depending on what their motivations are, what they motivated by, that's how we talk. Because some people will be like, yeah, I want to turn this into a multi-million dollar company, an asset that then I can attract investors and exit and sell. 
Like, you can't do that running through all the money. Nah. Mm-hmm. Like, no, nah, they're going to expect the team to be solid. They're going to expect the systems and processes to be solid. The oper- All that got to be solid before they buy it. Mm-hmm. They're not going to buy into somebody making money and spending money. Right. But if you just want to make money, it's more of a tax strategy thing. And for those people that's actually trying to sell, the first thing people going to ask for is them books. Like, Facts. Yeah, all that look good. Yeah, I see what you said you made on Instagram. Let us see them books. Let us see them numbers. Yeah. So if y'all ain't coming to see Albert at that point, y'all, you behind the eight ball. So. For sure. For sure. Because I'm trying to sell album. I want to go. <laughs> I want to go. I got to be on the... I want to buy an island just to be there. You know what I mean? So if somebody is listening to this... Well, one, before we even get to that, a lot of times in the black community, selling is like you selling out. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it's like you are not supposed to sell this business when white people do this, get in business, sell it, get in business, sell it like 20 times before they die. Facts. Right? Yeah. Why do you think that in the black community it feels like you're not supposed to let go of this? Like, why we got to hold on to the business for 25,000 years? I don't understand it. It's like we we hold each other to like a very unrealistic standard of yeah. having a struggle. Like, if you build something that you can sell and create generational wealth for your family, I feel like that should be applauded. Yeah. Because, you know, I always think, when I had this kind of conversation, I always mm-hmm. think about it. it was Shea Moisture, right? When it Shea Moisture that ended up, it was a black company that sold. I can't even remember which oh, one. Oh, uh, Mayel Organics just sold. Yeah, uh-huh. I can't remember which one it was. But I remember dude was on Breakfast Club trying to explain, like, why he was doing it. Mm-hmm. And I was like, why is bro having a fight? Right. Yeah. Like, and he's saying, like, yeah, but no, I take the money and I put it in our community and blah, blah, blah. Like, but you got to fight to explain it. Like, yeah, why can't I just be a businessman like anybody else? Yeah. Like, of course, and it ain't like this ain't still for us. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's just I'm trying to I'm trying to push forward. I don't understand it. I really don't. But I do have that conversation a lot. Because, like, you know, for example, right choice. Like, we really helping a lot of black business owners stay in business, mm-hmm. save a lot in taxes. Mm-hmm. We train people, right? Y'all would be surprised how many people come to us because they people won't even reply to them. Mm. So at the day where Albert and Lauren decide they moving on, the best we can do is make sure that we sell to somebody who going to treat our folks right. Mm-hmm. But, like, don't be trying to hold Albert to nothing because I think most of the CEOs who really doing it, mm-hmm. like, bro, we're not going to do this forever. No. Do y'all know what we going through? No. <laughs> you want this to be ghetto forever? Well, like, like gonna, no. Yeah. I got friends that's talking about, like, literally have sold their businesses for hundreds of million dollars. Yeah. You can have it. Yeah. Like, and, you ain't, and, you ain't supposed, and you ain't supposed to do that. Yes. You ain't supposed to do that for you and your family. Exactly. And I don't understand it. You know what I'm saying? But I think I think as an entrepreneur or just black people in general, sometimes we have like this attachment to stuff. Mm-hmm. Right? And when it changes, it's like kind of like when the uh, when the church started getting bigger. And more people go, you're like, man, why are you in my seat? Right. Yeah. Who is this new pastor? Right. Like, yeah. what is going on? Yep. Like, you just can't handle change. And I think maybe because maybe our trauma or whatever, but we just can't handle when things change around us. Yeah. Yeah. And I think it may be, or I don't, I don't understand it really, yeah. but it may be one of them things where, you know, like every time black folks get something, they go move mm-hmm. to the white neighborhood. Yeah. Maybe, maybe that's being deflected onto that. Yeah. But this business, yeah. like, it's black, is whatever. Businesses ain't got no color. Green. Yeah. <laughs> Green or color. Yeah. It's either make it or save it or, yeah. you know, don't wait. It's, but everything we do is around green. Mm-hmm. I love it. I love it. So we got a segment that we call These Are My Confessions. Oh, Lord. I'm glad you sung it because I was like, I'm, I I can't get the key. Okay, yeah, go ahead. I was going to say, I sang oh, for y'all. Oh, that's See, they, the album. They tried, to, they tried to make me rap. So yeah. I, I messed around and mentioned another story. <laughs> You had them bars back in there. Nah, you said I really you can sing, though? Nah, I really can't sing. Oh, oh. oh I'm like, I, like, like, I can't hey, do nothing. Hey, hey, you know you be so bad at it that you don't mind doing it because it's funny? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's me. Yeah. I, <laughs> I don't get embarrassed. Singing is the only thing I get embarrassed about. Like, I'm mm-hmm. so bad at singing. Like, it, like it's like a cat nine. Like, it is terrible. Hey, I start out strong. I start out sounding like somebody who can sing, yeah. but if I go about three seconds, like, in my breathing, right. I feel like I can sing, but they tell me I can't. You are so. entitled to your feelings. <laughs> you are entitled to your feelings. <laughs> I think I can sing. So, y'all, welcome to the segment. These are my confessions. He's gonna be on the Super Bowl. Yeah, he is. Yeah. Period. Okay, so I'm gonna ask you three questions from your past, your present, and your future, and you gotta answer. You got it? 
I'm gonna I'm gonna look over for my <laughs> for my legal counsel before okay, answering. Okay. Get a head nod. Yeah, I'm gonna. If you gotta opt out the questions, you gotta sing the song. I'm with that. Okay, cool. <laughs> All right, bet. So, past question: Name one person you did wrong, and how would you handle it today? Well, can I name multiple? Can I tell yeah, a story yeah, around? Yeah, go ahead. So, I think I was somebody when I was younger. I didn't appreciate like friendship and stuff like that. Mm. I was super entitled. Like I felt like you my friend because I'm dope. Yeah. So I was just a very like self absorbed, not selfish because you know we go out, we eat, we share. You can mm-hmm. borrow money, blah blah blah. Mm-hmm. But I was very much so like self absorbed, like how I'm feeling in the moment, what's gonna work for me. So I know blew through some of like the we still cool, mm-hmm. but I know messed up some of the best friendships mm-hmm. just by not considering like what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. How it how it affects you? So, I mean, shoot, I got a couple. I don't want to say no names, but you know the one that's popping out. Like I had a really good. I'm talking about give you the. You know how you get a friend that'll give you the shirt Shut off their back. back. Yeah. yeah, I I um I my dog don't rock with me like that because I was taking the shirt off the back. Yeah, but when he needed my shirt, yeah. I like bro, I can't be giving you my shirt now. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I got kids, like yeah. <laughs> yeah. you know. So no, I I think that's a good question. That's a good question. I love that. You know? Now, friend, we're sorry. Come back. Yeah. Come back home. Tell him you're sorry. I mean, he know I'm sorry. We cool. <laughs> well, but I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. I should. I should. I should tell Did tell the story work. and sing it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I got. A, I got a song for it. I'm gonna. I'm gonna sing. I'm gonna sing. I'm gonna <laughs> sing. I'm gonna email though. you. I'm gonna email you the song. Okay. okay. Wait. It's official. Like you got a song about a situation already. Not that situation. Oh, I was about to say, Albert good. is really out here right. Say, we're you late. said you stopped, and Albert is really in the studio. <laughs> like, every time he go through some long, just like, baby, stop writing. He's like, hell no. Nah. Like, These niggas going to feel this. <laughs> <laughs> It's like just do the uh, just save them on taxes. No, they nah. want these bars, nah, bro. <laughs> they no, they want my story. They want tax savings. No, they want music. <laughs> <laughs> it's for the streets. No, it's not. Okay, <laughs> but listen. Okay, here's the present question: If you could commit a crime and not get caught, what would you do? Bank fraud. Mm. Mm. How much you hitting them for? All of it. <laughs> I if, I, if it wasn't illegal, I mean, if well, I, I mean, could, it's illegal. You just not gonna get caught. Yeah, you're not gonna get caught. I would take all the money. Uh, and like, I would sell you. A, I would buy the islands. Yeah, I give you a discount on the island. Period. I'm, Ooh, I'm gonna I'm get the money. Well, so, would you have a stopping point? Would it be like, all right, well, this bank is four hundred million in assets, and you taking just a whole four hundred million? You like, this is my bank now. I got it. I'm taking that bank. <laughs> I'm taking. He said, "You said not get, get caught." I was gonna say, I'm taking all of them. I'm at that draining level. every yeah. financial institution yeah. in America. I love yeah. it. And might go out the country, bro. If, <laughs> if you keep saying I can't get, so when I started to talk, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm going to work my way side. all the yeah. way down until they be like, all right, bro, you're going to get caught now. Yeah, like, yeah, like, until okay. y'all tell me to stop, I'm, I'm all right, and not And not selfishly. Yeah. Not selfishly. I'm going like, to feed the streets. I'm going to redistribute the yeah. funds. I'm going to, I'm Robin Hood. Okay. Okay, it. so what was the first thing that you would do with your first $100 million? The first $100 million. Hey, man, what world we done got to where that don't feel like a lot of money to right. me? <laughs> like, uh. so, first off, I would probably buy... Before I buy the island, I would probably go to one of these places. You know, like, it's a big stretch between Orlando and, and um, Atlanta. Mm-hmm. Probably go buy one of them cities. Like, mm-hmm. all the land out there. Get, like, my family straight. Get us out there on, like, a little, what you call them? Like, a, um, a little, not a plantation. <laughs> <laughs> we not going back, Laura. We not you know, going like back. A, you know how you have, like, the family land. Well, yes, everybody, state, uh, state. Uh, thank you. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, I'll probably get my family in the state. Thinking that's gonna cost a couple million, y'all know that's probably gonna be about twelve, thirteen. Right. If you're gonna bring the whole family, yeah, you gonna yeah. yeah. Then I'm gonna go back to my hometown. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna make sure they got the kind of stuff that we got up here. Okay, like, so they say Alabama. Yeah, Lynette, what? Alabama. Yeah, okay. yeah, big representative. Yeah. So, How many people that like? Bye. Anybody watching this in Lynette, please, <laughs> please five. let us know. Hopefully they watch it. Hopefully they watch it. <laughs> you know, I want my city to be proud of me. I'm yes. not one of these people. But no, I um. I go and actually give them some stuff and opportunity. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, and this ain't no downside, but when you come from a small town, Mm -hmm. it's a small town mindset. Mm -hmm. So I just want to kind of open all it up. Because, man, we got some brilliant people who work Mm -hmm. in plants. Like, I graduated with, like, brilliant people who didn't even, like, go to college and stuff like that. Like, they just went right into the plant. 
So I would first would be the Hurstons, okay. my family. Second would be my city. Okay. Then I would just go around to the different city. Yeah. Yeah. Take care of the streets. Yeah. I love it. I, I love don't because I don't want no. I don't want no Lamborghini. I don't. I don't need no. You know right. this. A, this is a good what yeah. seven hundred or something. Yeah. I don't That's need cool. more than this. This good. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm they saying? They were right here. Um. Uh, I got an iPhone. Bro, fo- we on Photoshop yeah. this one. Yeah. yeah it's just- <laughs> I hate him so much. All right. This is our future question. If you could pick anybody in the world to do their accounting, who would you do and why? Who would you handle their finances? I ain't never thought that's a good one. And I got a follow up question as soon as you answered it. Because I ain't never, I ain't never really thought about that. Because mm. you know it would be, it would be easy to like pick a celebrity that I rock with, mm-hmm. like you know Beyonce going through some things, blah blah blah. But Did almost, she tell wait, her what's T? I, she just she just had a couple little tax issues. I don't want to be talking well, about the <laughs> But the shade room need to know. Tell us. I can't, do <laughs> I can't do it. Can't do it. But no. But no. No, I I am one to not be. You know, for what I do, I can't be talking about other people's business. Okay. So that's we'll, we'll ask off camera. But, but really, <laughs> we'll, we'll get like, you in a minute. Right, right. But what I'm more passionate about is really like helping. Cause you know, to be real, like people who just start don't really need help yet. They need mm-hmm. to figure out. What you do? They need mm-hmm. sales and marketing, mm-hmm. figuring they that ain't out. No money. Yeah, you ain't got no money to save. You need to be trying to figure out how to get some money. Yeah, but like those businesses that start getting up into those six figures, mm-hmm. and then like that's when you really need. I I need to know what these numbers saying. I need to be smart with how I'm doing stuff. I need to make sure I ain't overpaying in taxes. Yeah, that's what I'm super passionate about. Making sure that as small businesses scaling, they actually get good accounting and tax, not just mm-hmm. you know the Any. the corporate read. You know, I don't. Can I call them corporate reject? Too late. <laughs> like I said, we're here now. <laughs> but you know, like a lot of people who start businesses because they couldn't move up in their career in corporate. Yeah. So you kind of get the people who, for whatever reason, couldn't move up where mm-hmm. everybody know what's going on. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that ain't, you know, that ain't fair to us. Right. Right. So back to the question. This ain't got nothing to do with the question. <laughs> it's just hard. Let me see. Who would be? Who would it be? See them rich folk. They don't need it. It's somebody who needs it. anybody you want. So this yeah. ain't about who need it. This is like if I could have this one client on my books. One person I thought of when I wrote the question was like, if you could have went back and fixed Steve Harvey issue. Yeah, yeah. Like, like you know that. what I'm saying. It would definitely be like a Steve Harvey or yeah. Jay Z. The, re- the reason I would love Jay Z just because of the stuff that I would get to pick up. Mm. So I'm doing the books, the taxes, the blah blah blah. I'm also learning like. Mergers and acquisitions. Yeah. I don't know if y'all studied Jay Z, but the way that what he started with, what he turned it into, and what he at now, like that's the lesson. Like that need yeah. to be a TED. T- I'm, I'm sure it is, but it need to be a right. TED talk book, a course. college course. <laughs> right. You know, blueprint is a whole. And we ain't got to get into that. I'm yeah. a, matter of fact, Jay Z. Yes. Okay. I love it. Here go my follow up okay. question. Now, how we charging him? Are we gonna get a percent, or we or we want to be on salary? Like, how would you? Cause yeah, I think how much money that's gonna be. No, like. bro, well, I wouldn't take no percent of his earning. Cause again, you know, sales and marketing are the drivers. Yeah, mm-hmm. but just get a nice little, nice little retainer. Okay, okay, nice little retainer. Yeah, see, you, uh, I'd be trying to get the so, right. I choice. want a piece. Yeah, cause I mean, you gotta be, <laughs> you gotta be a fa- salesman from the jigger man. Let me get uh three point five. That's it, just three point five percent. Oh, what you say? Nah, I would love it, but nah, I want, I want to ask for that, cause. You, know. you ain't got nothing to do with how he made the money. That's what I'm saying. You I ain't got nothing to do with him. Now, maybe he could do a bonus structure where it's like if I save X amount on taxes, then I get a percentage of X amount. Well, that look, what I, look that Christmas what I do. bonus. <laughs> 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 but you know that the whole that's why you work with a right choice yeah. instead of somebody else. We gonna pay for ourselves. Yeah, based so, on the savings. Based on the saving, yeah. I love that. I love that. Okay, so those was good questions. That was our segment called "These Are Our Confessions." So going back into managing your books and as an entrepreneur, I talked about I talk all the time about how when I made my first million dollars, it completely broke my business. Like that shit was cute. To put online, but it was a whole, we went from $168,000 to a million dollars in one year. So, like, how do you recommend for your clients to be able to keep their money? Because making the money is, it it becomes easy. Yeah. But it's like keeping the money. Because the second year, we end up making $2 million, but I spent 50% of my income on payroll. Yeah. So, how do you keep the money? 
Have you been completely isolating yourself in business? Like, you don't have people that you could do this business with. Well, you need coworkers, and that is why we created the Entrepreneurs Coworkers Community. This allows you to be able to develop relationships with other people in your community. So in the Entrepreneurship Coworkers Community, we have a complete Slack channel where you get to talk to other CEOs just like you. We give you a quiz to find out who you are and what type of CEO you are. And in this quiz, you get to meet other CEOs that may be more creative or traditional or hybrid we have these ceos there for you but even taking it up a notch we have local chapters in your city from atlanta to dallas to new york to houston to chicago chapters in your city where we're actually linking up every single month to work together linking up to go to brunch together having fun together doing community service outreach like this is a section of our life where we can really co-work and mingle with other people it's time for you to get some co-work assist and this community is completely free just because you're watching this podcast all you have to do is stop pause the podcast click the link below take the assessment get in the community and i'll see you there bye coworker. back to the episode it's just understanding the metrics i was talking about them earlier Mm -hmm. like we got all kind of stuff we talk about like 70 20 10 rule Mm -hmm. and you know 25 percent of this should go to marketing it just Mm -hmm. depends on what type of business you are because there are like smart metrics to you yeah so making two million you know, you ain't gonna be able to really keep it. Right. You're gonna have to either to. you're gonna have to either, you know, give it to Uncle Sam or you yeah. keep some or you're gonna have to spend it. Right. But I just keep people keep it all into perspective. Cause yeah. it really don't matter if it's, you know, one sixty eight or a million. Mm-hmm. The percentages sh- should check. Mm-hmm. Like when you in grow mode, you need to be doing more marketing. Yeah. I'm not one of these accountants that like you should talk to an accountant and an attorney on like getting it set up right, getting the book set up right. Yeah. But like don't be prioritizing that over getting to the money. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like if you ain't, you know, a couple hundred thousand, at least six figures, like yeah. you need to be everything you doing, you need to be a hustle. Yeah. People be Thanks. like, I don't like this hustle culture. Well, you don't uh-huh. like money. Right. You ain't finna be on no <laughs> business. Right. But anyways, back to what I was saying, it really fits within those percentages based on what type of business you are. Mm. Like if you're a consulting business, mm-hmm. man, I ain't gonna get into the percentages. I guess people could people could pay us for that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Tap in, okay. Yeah. Go get you. Go make uh, the right uh, choice. Tap. Yeah, these men want to jingle so Plug. bad. Get, <laughs> bro, I'm with it. We Plug. can talk right after this. <laughs> <laughs> we could throw ass right behind them bars. <laughs> As long as it ain't me doing it. Yeah, look, man. We, I'm gonna we, be the, I can be the hype man. Nah, see, I need some ad libs from you. Like, whatever. Yeah. whatever. But I want the ones you was doing in the early 2000s. I don't want the, like, I want, like, when you was in the studio sweating with the uh, black tee on, because I know you was rocking that black tee, and you had the forces, <laughs> and you had the forces, and you might have had a fitted cap on backwards. I don't know. This is just what I see in my head. I need that energy when we Hello, get like, how did you know? Hey, it's that, like he was there. Hey, that's exactly it. That's exactly it. <laughs> Tall T the bold. Yeah. One. That's the era. Big fake earring. Big fake Man, chain. What? These top things. top and bottom. <laughs> top and bottom. Yeah. Oh, you had a top and a bottom? But you were serious. I had 16 of them things. Ooh, and you just knew you were getting out of the hood rapping. Yeah. What made you quit? Lauren. <laughs> Lauren, like, it's just off camera right now. I ain't oh, gonna say yeah. no names. Yeah, just, you, she had a reality check, which like she was like, baby, that ain't baby, me. Baby, you twenty eight. <laughs> no, it's when, you, you twenty eight, baby. You no, got it's three when, kids. But for real, when you start getting grown and mm-hmm. you yeah. start being like, oh wait, this a business. Yeah, because mm-hmm. you know I had I'm just like everybody. Else. I had the thousands of songs, the mid tape, yeah. got the little got the little record deal yeah. with the with the folk who the just local. trying to figure. It, yeah, yeah, you know. yeah, yeah, yeah. But no, nah, it just. When you start figuring out, oh no, this ain't about writing and having a good time. This business. Yeah. yeah. I was like, I ain't wanna do business over there. I wanna I wanna be passionate. Right. <laughs> you know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Anyways, you don't ask me about no rap. <laughs> but no, the people need to know. You know what I'm saying? You go through multiple things, but as you have been developing this this business, the right choice, right? Yeah. Um, what are some of the foundational principles that you feel like entrepreneurs should have when it comes to their money? Yeah, I think I think one of the, I love that question, by the way. I think that some of the first things that every entrepreneur should do when they start is come up with, like, their company um, principles. Mm. So not even just money-wise, because the money going to, if you do what you're supposed to do, the money going to do what it's supposed to do. Yeah. So it's being super clear on what you're going to do, what you're not going to do. What You know, these lessons mean you probably learn the hard way. Mm-hmm. What you're going to do, what you're not going to do, what yep. you stand for. Like, at Right Choice, number one, we client obsessed. Mm. We client obsessed. We gonna do what's in the best interest of our client. Number two, 
super high integrity. Because mm. y'all know we in business, there are always opportunities for you to make more money yep. mm-hmm. at the expense of your client. Yep. Mm-hmm. We ain't going to never do that. Yeah. And then as far as like managing the money to give you, like the question you asked asking for, yeah. it's just like, this ain't my money. Yeah. I am the <laughs> steward for this business. Ooh. Like, right choice, right choice look like it's Albert and Lauren and yeah. our team. Right choice is right choice. Mm. I'm Albert. That's Lauren. That's my wife. We yeah. well, we got kids and that stuff. That's separate from right choice. Yeah. Mm. The job that I have at right choice is to make right choice grow. Yeah. So right choice is just a baby. Yeah. You know, it's a teenager now, but grow up a little bit. Yeah, it's, a, it's, a, it's growing up. It's but, a puberty. <laughs> but yeah, it's like this ain't even about you. It's the business. So your yeah. job as the CEO, the owner, the leader, is to make sure that you're making the best decision for this business. Mm. And that Lamborghini ain't the best decision. Right. That could have been on ads. Think about how many how many ads you could put on. For a Lamborghini? Yeah, you can build your whole team. That's your marketing budget for the year. That's the whole, that, <laughs> like, and that's just going to double and triple right. it. Like, so I, I always, like, take people back to that. Yeah. Like, just perspective. Yeah. Is there ever a time you would advise somebody to make that type of purchase? Like, what's the scenario? You're like, okay, you got to get rid of this influx in cash. You got to dump money in. Like, is there every time you push somebody to buy something expensive like that? Yeah, when it makes sense for them. Okay. Because, you know, some people do live lifestyle brand. They business is lifestyle. Mm-hmm. So, at the end of the year, when they done, like, made millions, and they've been renting this Lamborghini to show it all, go on and buy it. Yeah. Like, if you're a, car, if you're a person that drives around all the time, like, hire yourself a driver. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. Because being extravagant ain't the problem. It's... Being extravagant when you ain't got it. So prematurely yeah. extravagant. Faking. Yeah. Right. Faking. Right. So I'm trying to say it the nice way. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'll think about Chris Brown because you got all the Lamborghini. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Chris Brown can afford them Lamborghini. Right. right. Drake can afford them Lamborghini. Right. Jay Z can buy what? Jay Z and Beyonce, what they just bought like a hundred million dollar some crazy house. Mm-hmm. Right. They got it. Yeah. They can do that. But when you make a hundred, I'm going to say 168 band, yeah. Like don't let 75 of it be. Mm. Oh, because you can write off a Range Rover in the first year if you you could appreciate the full thing and write like don't do that. Cause like, they didn't listen to somebody on the TikTok. Yeah, up and down. <laughs> Cause you know them tips, them tips and tricks ain't nothing but give me some attention, give me some attention, yeah. give me your it dream selling. I love it. Yeah. So before we go, we have a segment called "Figure It the Fuck Out" because as a CEO, you always figuring it the fuck out. Okay. So I'm gonna pick this scenario, and you are gonna tell us if this happened to you, what would you do? I bet it already happened. <laughs> <laughs> he like, I feel it. Mm, this is a good one. Okay, so your business is actually not making money, and it hasn't been making money for the last 90 days, and your financial advisors say that you have to let some staff go. You don't want to, but you know you need to make some changes. What you doing next? I mean, it ain't. I'm very non-emotional about, now. Nah, I'm emotional with my people. Right. Mm-hmm. But I'm very non-emotional about business. So, I mean, Everything we've done, if I've built it the way it's supposed to be built, make perfect sense. Mm. So if somebody got to go, they just got to go. Yeah. We're going to address it head on. Like, oh, you talked to Marquill. Marquill mm-hmm. instilled in me a long time. Marquill Russell, by the way. Shout um, out to Marquill. <laughs> Shout out. He was like, we, um, we hire slow, we fire fast. Because, mm-hmm. again, I'm just a steward of growing this business. And, you know, of course, like, people who work with us, we feel like family. But it's completely clear, like, we all here to do what's in best interest of right choice. Because, mm-hmm. you know, I'm in last. Y'all ever heard that saying, like, leaders eat last? Mm-hmm. I'm in last after everybody. Right. Because y'all the ones who finna be a right choice. So mm-hmm. at the very moment where it don't make sense for right choice, we just got to have a real conversation about it. And, and make the right choice. And transparent. <laughs> And make the yeah, man, look, man. Hey, it's hey, always hey, there. Hey, it's always hey. there. I gotta make the right choice for right choice. Yeah. Cause your right choice is right choice. Ooh. That was that That's the one. Lord, right. he, he back. He back. <laughs> but yeah. But nah, I would be I would be super non emotional about it. I would just talk to him, be real with him, cause you know, we take care of people's family. Mm-hmm. So I wouldn't like it wouldn't be no hard decision, but we would go ahead and have a hard conversation. Yes, I love it. I love it. So, let Cody. What up? Did you enjoy this episode? Bro, I'm lit. We going to the studio after this. No. I can't even do no more episodes today. 
I'm gonna get burner on the phone. Big burner, we on the way. I'm taking you to the south side, and we just gonna make a jingle. Don't not oh, that, do where it. The, that where the wings at. That what I'm saying. <laughs> like that. Look, okay. I live in, y'all know I live in Gwinnett, so y'all know we need to. Yeah, yeah, you know, know what I mean? get a little bit, little bit further south. Yeah. I got no, you. I love this. This was really good. I hope you guys got some amazing financial tips so that you could be able to continue to grow your business. Because honestly, y'all, it is ghetto, but this is a job. That we said, like people yeah. actually go on Indeed or LinkedIn to apply for jobs to be CEOs of companies, right? Yep. We applied for this position, right? We just happen yeah. to be the founders too, and so you have a responsibility to run this company financially sound. So make the right choice. <laughs> Bart, hey, can Dang. I ask you a question Wait. real quick? Girl, what rhyme with CEO? G H E T T O. See hey. you guys on the next episode. <laughs> Bye, y'all. <laughs> 